Victorian Periodical Parade. Hello, friends, and welcome back to another Victorian Periodical Parade. This is part two. I didn't look up any specific stuff from the journal this week because Belgravia is the first one we've really come across that I know a lot about on my own. Nice. And so instead of just finding random miscellany in Belgravia, I thought I would bring tell your favorite you to the table. It. I always want to double check. Yes. So Belgravia was founded and run by a female Victorian novelist named Mary oh, Elizabeth yeah. Braddon. Wait, oh, really? Yes, 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 oh. of course. There's, yeah, Lady Aldi's Secret. Oh, man. Yeah, I just, so number one, the sort of throwbacks in this short story to the sensation fiction of the 1860s is kind of meaningful because it was Braddon, the founder of Belgravia, that was also one of the two founding authors of that genre. She and Wilkie Collins wrote the first two sensation novels you've read, um, and audience members can find Lady Aldi's Secret in season two. Yep. If they want to go over that, we talk a lot about it during that show, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about the book, but what's cool to know is that Braddon, who was the founder and editor of the magazine in which this short story appeared, also essentially invented the psychological thriller genre that Lucy Hardy is giving sort of some throwbacks to in this short story, namely the fears about anonymity and identity and not knowing who somebody is. I mean, that's essentially the core of the plot in Lady Aldi's Secret is yep. that there is an imposter. Mm -hmm. They're actually, if you think about it, if the character in this short story had been successful, it might have been almost the same story. So right. it makes you wonder to what extent Lucy Hardy did that as sort of a tip of her hat to another female author who she, you know, maybe she hoped that she would recognize that she was making allusions to her work and kind of giving her a nod there. And it seems like it worked out. I, it may be why the story was accepted is kind yeah. of my thinking. The only other thing to say about the Gravia and Braddon is just that Braddon was seriously the most badass Victorian woman that I can ever think of because again not only did she sort of invent an entire genre but she ran this magazine and she wrote I want to say she wrote 70 novels in her lifetime oh my gosh but let me wow. I always second guess myself so let me just check I mean it's my a, facts it's a great number 80 uh, okay that's wow nice 80 novels, and she was running this magazine, which was very successful. I mean, I've said this a few times that I'm not a periodical specialist. So in my view, like if I know of the magazine, then it's mm -hmm. pretty well known. Ah. So like, and writing at that time was not physically easy. I mean, like no. ink and paper didn't yep. work the way they do now. And, Printing and she presses. was also a mom. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure she Ugh. lived with her, like she lived out of marriage with, yes, she lived with a man whose wife um, was in a mental asylum. So they lived out of wedlock and she was a stepmother to his children. Mm -hmm. And then she had six kids. What, uh, with, with him or with just- With him her? and wrote 80 novels. Well, it's- uh, um, yeah, that's the answer. That's the only appropriate response. <laughs> Good thing you called her a badass because holy mackerel. Wow. I just can't. I mean, you and I have two kids. Right. And we have things like air conditioning and microwavable yeah. foods. And, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, we, we might have to get into what her husband did. You probably know, but what oh, was his I didn't, career? I, apparently he was a publisher. No, I didn't know that on my own. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I just, I mean, it feels physically impossible. Like, I mean, even just having kids, it like right. ruins your body. I don't know how any of those women did it. Like, I've been in so much physical therapy because I had two. Yeah. 
like I can't imagine having six and then like being like oh I'm just gonna take the quill and ink and just pen a novel and I'm gonna pen 79 more like well they they do say that it gets easier to have more and more kids as it goes on so that's one thing I and don't the, think it gets easier though no? to have those children in existence while you write more novels like well but that goes in to my other idea okay. is that now that you have six kids you either stay at home and just always have them running around and then you know you might have time where you know the oldest one is now taking care of the youngest one because you told them to and now you can sit down and then kids always ask question 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 and the only time that they're quiet is if you're entertaining them so maybe she told stories to her kids and then went and wrote them and then kept writing them uh, while the kids were asleep and so she balanced her day like that and if her husband was a publisher it's an easier way to get a book out the door because then he's like oh well i'll take the book and i'll go publish it then she also ran a magazine so it's just like okay she she's she's a boss all right cool <laughs> yeah they probably had a governess too yeah. lady oddly secret was so 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 successful they probably had a governess, but it's still, I mean, yeah, I don't still. even think even today people write 80 novels, except people like, like James Patterson and John yeah. Grisham. And like, I mean, I'm not hundred percent sure, but I think it's fairly well known that they have teams of ghostwriters that help write oh. those novels. Mm. I'm going to say that in very hypothetical terms, cause yeah. I don't know. And I don't want to get sued for libel right. but pretty sure that's like well known like so even today when we have computers and stuff like yep. nobody writes 80 novels right nobody does that my other question about james patterson novels a lot of them seem to have a similar cadence are most of braddon's novels similar to lady oddly secret or do they vary so I went on a big kick for a while of trying to read five books by every major Victorian novelist ever. Oh Most of that was done when I did my qualifying exams. Right. Like I had to, but yeah. But so I tried to do like the ones like Mary Elizabeth Braddon, who wasn't famous enough for me to put five of her books. I ended up just reading everything Wilkie Collins ever wrote because he's easy to read through. But no, I found her books, at least the ones I chose, were all very very different mm, um okay. and i couldn't get through some of them like there's one aurora floyd oh yeah that one's referenced in places yeah it's just kind of like it's kind of about a woman who like she's a little bit forward with men but like i don't think that much really happened in it it certainly mm. wasn't sensation fiction and then the doctor's wife is just a retelling of madame bovary i believe mm. which is Basically a woman like read too many novels and like has her head in the clouds. Hmm. John Marchmont's legacy, I do write about in my book. And that was, I liked that one. That was a sensation novel. Nice. And then I read Vixen. So I guess I did read five by her. And Vixen was about like just nothing. I mean, it's like there's a lot of kind of slower moving psychological plots. It's not well, like I thought I was going to get to read a lot of thrillers, right? Oh, sure. And at least but, not the one that I, not the ones that I randomly picked. Yeah. But like we've talked about in the Victorian era, people sitting at home would have the time to enjoy a long drawn out novel. That's like, oh, I'm going to have to think about this between it's chapters. True. That's true. I don't know if I know the answer and know who the killer is. Okay. 1860, she started writing. Cause I was just thinking 80 novels. Like, if you think of most people maybe don't even live 80 years, then that would be like a novel a year your entire life, which is obviously impossible. Right. So then I started thinking she had to have written at least two novels a year because she didn't start when she was super young. She had what? a first career as an actress. So now we're going to do this oh, now. Gosh. 1860 to 1910. That is 50, 50 years. Yeah. 80 divided by 50, right? 1.5 a year. That's it. Oh, okay. In those 50 years. Yeah. I feel like it would, I would have thought more than that. Well, 80 is close to 100. So it's two a year mm -hmm. and it's less. So, yeah. But I mean, how long are each of her novels? Like, what's the average? 
on a Braddon novel because I mean, Lady Audley's either. Secret was volumes. Oh yeah, and Lady Audley's Secret is a short Victorian novel by Victorian standards, but they're sure. all about that length. I mean, some are more. Yeah, um, not nine hundred pages or no, no, no. They're like three hundred. Oh, three hundred. Nor- okay. What we would think of a normal novel length. Okay, yeah. So it's very similar to a Patterson novel because Patterson is about three hundred. I want to look that up now since I've said it. James Patterson <laughs> write his own books. I think it's well known. Yeah, it's not a secret by now that James Patterson doesn't write his own material. I'm pretty sure this is a known business model of like any of those authors like Daniel Steele or whoever that you see, like they have 80 books. Like, I think it's just known that they're just kind of putting their name on it after a while. Well, that's but- a question then for Braddon. I know I am curious and I don't know that we would ever really know. Yeah, it's an interesting research topic. We'll have to scroll the boards for, hey, did Braddon write all of her own novels? Because if she also ran the magazine, she's getting books sent to her to publish. So yeah, that would be very interesting to find that answer. But don't do it yourself find somebody else well i think we were kind of wrapping up anyway i should probably go but i think that's what i wanted to cover okay, cool. all righty well this was cool all right well you guys have a good night all Talk right to you later bye bye thanks again for tuning in to the victorian periodical parade have a great day see ya Victorian Periodical Parade Victorian Periodical Parade